Hello and welcome back. I'm going to continue with the after installation class. Um, the previous video we did the handle server and we've also done uh, the server firewall. So with this uh, video I'd like to do the secure connections to the internet. So we click there. Um, this is the link to the page and as the introduction says this week the scrubbing method of securing communications to DSpace. Just a note, um, there's a new service out there called Let's Encrypt um, that is trying to uh, encrypt the whole web um, and they issue free certificates. I'll update this wiki page uh, when we get around to using um, Let's Encrypt. Okay, some requirements. Secure connections are not needed if you're doing an evaluation or a test server. Not needed. Um, this is mostly for the production server. Uh, it is assumed that DSpace has been installed according to the guidelines from Scholar DSpace. It's also uh, assumed that you have open port 443 uh, on your local server firewall and on your campus firewall. Um, it's also assumed that the default location for certificates will be here on the server. Uh, so if you have all those requirements in place, we can begin. So step one is to create the SSL certificate. Let's go through there. So the first step is to um, log into the server. So let's do that. And we'll log into our uh, local development server. And uh, see how we perform this on our development server. Okay, so we log in with the password. Right, so the script says, uh, and we'll just make sure that this is always on the top so you can see it. Right. So the script says we must become the root user. So we we'll copy and paste that and become the root user. Uh, password to become the root user. I suggest you um, Google and find out what issue do means, especially with Ubuntu. And then we make a scripts folder. And we will have another script. Okay, so it says the scripts folder is already created, so that's great. So the next thing we want uh, is to create a script to create the uh, certificate. But before we do that, uh, I just did want to mention that, um, let me minimize that out the way. I just want to mention that um, how secure you make your certificate depends on how well browsers will support the certificate. Okay, so this is why I have uh, two options. I have a strong encryption option for creating a certificate. And there, of course, the browser support varies. Okay. And then I have a weak encryption. Uh, and that's pretty much guaranteed to be supported by most browsers. But it's weak encryption. Okay. So for the benefit of... Uh, browser compatibility, I will be concentrating on the weak encryption uh, method. So, let's go to the weak encryption method and we create that script. So we copy that and paste that in there. Yeah. Right, then we just uh, cop yeah, select it with the left button and keep going down while I'm using the down arrow key on the keyboard. Okay, so we've got everything selected, we copy that and then we paste it in here. And uh, let's enter and control O to save it. And there it turns all nice and colory, uh, telling us that this is a, um, a bash script. Okay, so there are some uh, stuff we have to paste in here to make it um, workable. So our host we want to put in there is repository. And the contact email address for the certificate, well, well that'll be me, I suppose. So I'm going to type an email address there, save that. Alright, okay, there we, very important here, we're going to make it a 204 bits. Alright, definitely 204 bits, encrypted, yes. And then here, I suggest you put in your, your, um, 
fulfilling your own values here, as I mentioned there, for S, T, uh, and C actually. Right. Uh, so if you're in another country, so that's the country, South Africa, that's the province, Western province, that's the location, Stellenbosch, the organization is the University of Stellenbosch, the organization unit is the, our library, the Jaskarika library. CN is the host, which we've defined up here, the host variable there. So that's the host, then the email address as we defined it up there. there. Right, so then it goes there, it creates a configuration file. And then from that configuration file, it creates a new TN certificate and a new certificate request. Uh, it creates a PIM file for Apache 2. Um, doesn't clean up. So, very handy script, and you save it and exit. Very handy script just to create our certificate. So, there again, um, modify the host, modify the email, modify the country, uh, state, or province, locality, organization, organization, or not. So, those you must modify um, on your own, in your own, with your own script. Alright, uh, so we selected the RSA cert, so we must make the RSA cert executable, so that's that one there. And we paste that there to make it executable. So, and then we execute the script by typing that in there. So let's just have a look in the scripts folder, let's have a look what's going on there, and if we go ls-l and we're listing. So there we have, we have our make cert. RSA script there, and then some other scripts from uh, previous uh, previous work. So let's make the cert. You can just type that there, like that. The dot forward slash, or you could type in the full absolute path to execute the script. So let's paste that in there, just as an example, and it should do its work now. There we go. And okay, so there it has written out a key. And uh, I did it very quickly. Um, here, here, uh, there's the repository config file. So there's the the certs have been created in the. Um, if we go to full search etc, this is our certs in the default folder, and we do listing of uh, repository. All the search there, you can see they've been created. There is uh, the certificate signing request, there's the key, there's the Apache PEM file, and there's the cert file. So we have a cert certificate file, key file, the certificate request, and the Apache PEM file prepared. Okay, so that's the first step, is preparing uh, your own certificate on your own machine. Preparing it for signing. Right, so what's the next step? Step two is to apply for a signed certificate. So we've created a certificate signing request here, CSR, so certificate signing request. So what we want to do is we want to take that certificate signing request and send it to our selected uh, certificate provider. And we use uh, Symantec, or which is owned by very signed, so that's good, whatever. So as we as I mentioned here, you must take the certificate signing request file that is now in that etc SSL search folder and um, send it to the person that you uh, bought your certificate from. So we use Semantic. Right now, assuming that you have a uh, certificate has been returned as certified and it's normally uh, via CR extension or something like that. Um, well, it will be the certificate that is returned to you. So the first step is to log in, uh, become the root user, go to the root uh, folder. So let's go to that, see the root folder. And uh, assuming that you the, the certificate supplied to you has that name, then you copy it in there uh, to that, um, you copy it like this. Uh, create the, cert, uh, the official certificate from the certificate provider. So you replace host name with host name with cert. So for example, uh, in this instance, uh, I'm going to touch uh, various 
sign leave sign dot serve. Okay, so there is an example. It's just an example. So we would execute it like this, we paste that in there, and we would just overwrite repository. Of source repository there, CRT. We'd overwrite, we'd execute that command there to overwrite. So the certificate supply, we overwrite the one we created earlier on there. We overwrite it with the certificate supplied. Okay? Um, I just want to put this here because it's all source. So that's the principle. Um, the principle is the certificate is applied, then you overwrite it and you use that, uh, that uh, methodology. And you replace those names, those names. So. Right, you extract the details uh, from the search to see uh, how it was created by the certificate provider. Is to just type in that command, and paste in there, and of course it's a repository CRT. And so there's the uh, certificate details, it's the one we created, it's been made by us, so there you can see there's the subject, there's the email address, etc. So this will be the same, but it will um, have details about your um, certificate provider in here, issued by your certificate provider, okay? And there's the uh, raw uh, certificate details. So there's an example that I've done and extracted. Uh, to show you what it looks like. Uh, when you get your, uh, once you have a certificate signing request, uh, for example, CRT, CSR, CSR. Yeah, that if, once you have that certificate signing request there, you can check. Uh, Certificate signing request to see if it's uh, um, valid. So let's have a look and we can go and do C certificate signing request, CRS. Uh, no, I can't open that. CSR, sorry. CSR. Um, anyway, um, you can. Check your certificate signing request there to make sure it's valid. Uh, if you go to that website there, you can see there, you should just be able to paste it in. There we go. You copy and paste in your certificate signing request in there, and um, so Mente can check whether it's valid. Okay, and here's a listing of the certs. Um, I'll be coming to that one later on, which we'll create. And um, that one should be removed after the certificate is generated, and so should this one, depending on which kind of certificate is created. Okay, so that's the first step is creating the certificates. Sorry, second step is creating the certificates. So, uh, signing the certificate, sorry. Second step is signing the certificate, uh, receiving a signed certificate, and then um, copying it to the right location. That's the second step. Okay, so next step. You want to sign the certificates with the intermediate certificates, so um, good idea is to go to that folder. You come on, copy that, and go to that folder there, and paste. Yeah. There's a lot of certificates in this folder, as you can see, there's a lot of them. So what we want to do um, is to copy over uh, the ones that are required for our certificate. So we used uh, semantic, uh, as I said, semantic. So um, their certs are available here. And we simply download uh, one of their certs. So the first thing we want to do um, is use the 3G file. And we're going to get that cert and download it. So we copy that and paste that in there to get it. So there we are. We've downloaded, so if we do an Alice R B C A, um, we should see that that certificate is now available. There we go. 
And then we want to do, that's the primary certificate, primary certificate, so we want the secondary one as well. So let's do the 3G5 as well for the secondary, so we copy that. And we'll paste that in there to get the secondary. So there we go, this is our IC thing. Intermediate certificate, there we go. And there's some more links about intermediate certificates and what they do. And so, step three is to get the intermediate cert. So, we go into the next step. Um, just want to warn you do not continue until you have the required certs. Okay? Do not do the next step. Make sure you have the required certs. Intermediate certs. Right. And the next thing is we've got to configure Tomcat to actually use these certificates. Now, this procedure differs uh, radically from. Uh, what DSpace recommends. Um, so please, um, please uh, execute this carefully. Okay. So I'm just going to make a note here. Uh, please note this procedure differs from the official. Okay, that's official. Let's get that right there. And let's just uh, italicize that so that you know. Okay, so there we go. Please note this procedure differs from the official DSpace documentation. So, so the first step is to convert that um, SSL cert uh, into a PKS private key. 12 compatible cert that will be used by Tomcat because Tomcat uses these PKs uh, there. So there's the references of where um, I managed to get the information about that cert. So then I'll do the same thing we, to convert it, we do that, and we go to the search folder which we're already in. And then to uh, create the PKS file, we copy this and we replace hostname here yeah, with the hostname for our, that we've selected for our institutional project. So we copy that and then we paste it in here. So uh, let me just stretch this over here so you can see the uh, whole command more uh, clearly. There's the whole command there. Okay so we're going to be using the, let's see what the certificate does. It's going to use the primary certificate with a cert file, intermediate certificate, remember the 3G file, then we're going to use, um, we're going to go to the repository, repository.sun.ac.za. Remember, this is the um, cert that will have been returned by a certificate provider as being signed by them. So that's the signed certificate. And then we want the key, the key that we created. That is also a repository, repository. And then we want to create it as a compatible key file, compatible certificate for um, Tomcat to use, the PKS12 file. Alright, and then we just press enter to create it. Now we need to sign it with a password, so we use our default password or whatever. Please don't forget this password. I'm going to use one of my normal passwords. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to type it in. Uh, okay. Let's use 09 uh, Ubuntu 09 as the password. And type it in again 09 Ubuntu 09. So we don't have any errors uh, with the password and the certificate. So we should have a PKS12 file. So to see what it looks like, um, you use the key tool facility available with this space and let's have a look what it looks like and paste it in there and we replace this with uh, a repository yeah, pks12 yeah. now that password we want the pass 09 as one two we have to apply that password 09 as one two zero nine and then it's there's the pks details of the pks there we go there we go, it says that it contains one entry, 
patient date, email address, uh, all the details. So it looks uh, valid. Okay. Just want to, yeah, I repeat about the host name, that you'll be asked for a password, and that you must keep your password in the same place, just to remind you there. Okay, so there's an example again uh, of what it looks like. Uh, you can see there, a nice one there on the South Okay. Now we have to tell Tomcat to use the certificate. So we have to modify Tomcat server XML file. Another instance where we break the rule about um, modifying any the package files. In this case, it's, it's, it's necessary. So let's go back there and we'll type that in if you modify it. So what we have to do is find the 8443 connector. And so let's go down in here. Uh, sorry. Let's go down in here and look for the 8443 connector. And again, I'm having a look. There's a port 80 connector using the NIO protocol. Very nice. Uh, we go to 443. And then that's another three pool connector. And here we are. Here we are. 8443. That's right there. So we enable this by deleting that. And we enable it by deleting that. So now that connector is enabled. And we found it. And it is. We must tell it to listen on port 443, not 8443, it's just 443. We remove the comments around the section to enable it. Okay, that's what we've done. Now we've changed the listening port to 443. Now we must add the key store settings to this uh, config file. So let's do that. Let's create some space to add it. Let's put them in there. Uh, we can copy that as well, but um, I just want to see we copy that, we get it in nicely, copy that and paste it in there. And as it is there, the spacing there. And the key store file, the important part, the key store file. That certificate located, remember, it's a repository now. We change that to repository. That is what Tomcat will use for secure connections, the certificate. And we tell it's a PKS12 certificate. And then that pass, remember, when you created the certificate, we need to put in that password. So that password is 091209. And then control O to save this. So it looks like we have a valid. Um, Secure port. Uh, as I remind you, that you must replace the secret password with your password and replace the host name with your host name there. So the host name gets replaced and the password gets replaced, and that's what we did. Okay, and there is an example. Uh, already done there. Yeah. I will come to the ciphers later on. Uh, that's another issue entirely. Um, but for now, this is a, a working, if you restart Tomcat. This should be a working. Um, we should be able to do um, create working uh, secure connections. Okay, see on the cipher notes there uh, what kind of ciphers you want to use. Um, there is uh, some notes on the ciphers, so you just copy and paste in there um, the ciphers you want to use. Just a note, uh, please check these. That's it. It's a good thing to have uh, to make sure uh, you use the right uh, protocols. Uh, uh, I suppose you know with the uh, news lately, um, there's been a lot of news about the secure connections and SSL on the internet. So please take some time to check this out and make sure you've got it. Uh, you've done this as best as you can to make your server as secure as you can. And then we save that, and we're out of there. Okay, so let's uh, get back to the normal terminal size here. Just put that away there, and find out what the next step is. So, so now we've configured Tomcat to use the SSL search. So what's next? Now we have to configure DSpace to use the secure connections. 
So we want to become the dispatch user. Well, in this case, we just exit here to become the dispatch user. And here we could just start issue dispatch to become a user. And then we want to um, modify the um, dispatch config file to use this cure certificates. So we must look for this parameter in the config file. So we type control W and uh, copy that. And we want to look for that. So we switch that. So we can see here it is false. So we turn it on. So true. And then control O. So now for the XML user interface, when you click on login, um, it will switch on the secure connections. So there we go. And the comment is enable logins by turning that to true, switching on to true. So we've done that. And let's get out of the config file. So what's the next thing? Now this is optional. Um, you can um, make sure that all connections uh, are actually secure connections and you just follow this procedure. In the build properties file, uh, where the dspace base URL is, is uh, specified, you change the HTTP to HTTPS. Okay. Uh, and then rebuild on this screen. Okay? That's optional. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, we know that it's optional. Uh, just modify the documentation and so there. So now I'm not. So what's the next step? Well, then we rebuild the D space. Um, it's preferable to rebuild. It's also a good test. Or you can just simply restart D space to use the. Uh, the certificate, but I suggest because we modify the, the, the source here, the source dispatch config file, that you do a rebuild instead of a restart. Okay, so once you've done that, what's the next step? Then is to check your secure connection with these providers. Okay, and I think we've completed it. Yes, okay, then there's here's these references to the Tomcat, there's plenty of documentation there. Uh, references about SSL TVLs, uh, some notes from myself personally about the monopoly, which is now being broken by this Let's Encrypt service. As I said earlier on, um, I will try to update this wiki when and if we uh, start using this service. It, it looks very promising. Okay, so to enable that, uh, after all of that, is to rebuild or restart this space and then check the secure connection. I think that completes the um, secure connection section. Uh, thank you very much.